Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. Today we're at Cobra. I'm joined by Tom Olsofsky to talk a little bit about the Cobra King Speed Zone drivers. I know you guys in the past have, you know, at least the F9, it was really just the one speedback model. Mm -hmm. You got two models now this year um, with Speed Zone. Kind of what was the philosophy in adding in another model this year? Maybe just to, um, you know, apply to more golfers? Well, yeah, certainly that was the one thing that we probably didn't compete as well in the industry with an F9, the King F9. Um, is the fact that we had one model mm -hmm. and it was great. We, you know, our tour players went with it right away. It was mm -hmm. great performance, movable weights, you know, that traditional player uh, category. But we know there's a big market out there for golfers who want something even larger in a footprint, much more forgiving, much more easier to hit. And we've had clubs like that in the mm -hmm. past just with the King F9. We, we chose to kind of focus on on that story of speedback. Uh, with now with speed zones, we're bringing that model back into the fold. And we know there's gonna be some nice opportunities, some nice growth for us from a mm -hmm. business standpoint because we didn't have it with the King F9 speedback. So that's one thing. And certainly we're talking to all the retailers and fitters in the world and say, hey, what's working, what's selling, um, what's moving, what performance are you needing or wanting? And that's where the sure. extreme model of the speed zone driver is gonna really play mm -hmm. great for those golfers looking for forgiveness, distance, we all know that golfers look at drivers every time, and they want distance and forgiveness. Yeah, you know? absolutely. <laughs> now, with Cobra, again, the F9 was great with, uh, I think, really aerodynamic design, very successful there. But I think what's really cool this year with Speed Zone is the Infinity Face has been updated. You guys had the milled face previously, and you guys have updated it. Um, what went into that, and what are golfers going to find out of the uh, the milled infinity phase. One of the things we always study is how can we make the driver better? You know, and, and we know that the process for making drivers is somewhat imprecise. Uh, it's forging, casting, welding, polishing, uh, using carbon fiber and, and you know, bonding mm -hmm. those things together. So all those things have some variability. And one of the things we know it as you, you continue to see the industry look at these designs is we do have a speed limit. Uh, and one of the things that we know is to get better speed you have to make the product more precise so then you can make it a little right. faster. Uh, if, if it's imprecise, you have to design for that flexibility and make sure you're conforming and, and durable and all those things. So if you could be more precise with the product, um, you, can, you can make it better. So that's the one thing we've learned with our CNC milling processes. Um, we wanted to go and attack a little bit more of the body of the head, uh, the casting, because we have that forged faceplate, which is, which is pretty precise, but then you weld it. So you're adding this weld bead. Now it gets imprecise. Um, there's variability with each faceplate, how it fits in there. So all those things are pretty critical. We have a number of different programs that will uh, help us machine the face differently depending on what loft it is, what model it is. Everything is very precise. So now we're machining much more of that whole body. Uh, it's about 50% more than we did with the F9 Speedback. For sure. And then let's get in kind of the, to the nitty gritty, so to speak, of the differences between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, we got so the, the speed zone and then the speed zone extreme, mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned. What are the differences going to be? I know there's a little bit of shaping differences and mm -hmm. also there's the adjustable weights on the speed zone model. Right. Yeah, certainly the extreme has just the weight in the back yep. and the standard speed zones have both weights front and back. So we see that with a lot of players, a lot of fitters looking for that front back weight interchangeability mm -hmm. to, to dial in your performance and optimize it for each individual mm -hmm. golfer. But really it's about the footprint. You know, we basically saved all that weight amount that we would have up front with both the weight port and the, we would say the empty weight or, or dummy weight as okay. we call it. Um, so you save a bunch of weight and therefore you can stretch the body a little bit more. That's where you get a big benefit in inertia, which is the forgiveness benefit. You also get the center gravity further back because we are putting the weight in the back. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the two benefits that that player is going to see. Uh, and it's about a 500 point MOI gain. So that's pretty substantial in terms of the two sure. drivers uh, performing differently. And one of the things that we know, especially from having drivers with front back weights for a number of years, is that that's a big part of the playability. Uh, we know that that's a critical factor uh, in determining the fit, the feel, the shaft, everything about the golf club, because now it's about optimizing for the individual. And that's mm -hmm. where we're all gonna see gains. And, and one of the things that people uh, often comment is, well, geez, you have these speed limits and you have all these rules, you know, how can you make the driver better? And I said, well, we do make progress on that. We yeah. make the chassis better, we make the structure better, we make the face better. Uh, all these things we get more precise. But the big benefit we always see is the golfer, when they get fit, there's a benefit there. What I really like about Cobra is that there's multiple color options too. You got like a gloss black on the, mm -hmm. the speed zone here, for example, and then you have a matte black and you also got yellow or white. Mm -hmm. So I really like that because golfers can 
I mean, a big part of it too is just you know, the appearance of a dress too. You got to be confident in what it looks like. So, you know, aside from the technology, like you've mentioned already, is just the appearance. Golfers are going to get what they want. We spend a lot of time on appearance. You know, we know that drives the shelf appeal of the product. We know that drives the cool factor. Um, we spend a lot of time talking with Ricky mostly and Bryson as well and Lexi to understand what those better players look mm -hmm. at. And also, they all our athletes are really good at understanding the whole. Um, the styling side and the coolness factors that we need to put in a product because we want it to be cool. You know, when you think about golf clubs versus any other sport, uh, it's one of the, the few things where you actually stare at and use the golf club head to help you play. You know, no one is staring at their baseball bat back here or their <laughs> tennis racket, right? They're just swinging and, and hitting. So golf is something that uh, we, we talk about the psychological aspects of design and players is, you know, when you're staring down at that club, you want it to look good. You want to look confident. You want it to look stylish. You want to appreciate that you bought a, a really good product. So we spend a lot of time on that, spend a lot of energy. And uh, the two choices is something that, you know, we're, we're trying to tap into what golfers are asking for. Uh, and certainly there's been a trend in, in sort of the matte finishes over the last four or five years, uh, maybe longer. And always the traditional classic golfer that just, hey, I just want black and I want glossy. You know, so those are the two lead finishes that we've had. We've called that down many years ago. We did five and sometimes six options. Um, but these two have been really popular, uh, especially with the, the King F9 Speedback this year. And we know with, with the King Speed Zone, it'll be even better. Absolutely. Well, Tom, thank you for joining us today and spending time with us to provide all this information. I know the golfers out there are pretty excited about Cobra Speed Zone. So uh, two really excellent driver options for uh, golfers in 2020.